how much do you charge very quickly <laughs> or charge yeah. up a guy that was so cool i mean you've got acorn on, on whatsapp joe like i mean yeah, i do where do you think we are as a country where fashion where style is concerned particularly for musicians Tyler is like on another level, like people can't touch yeah. her. The jumpsuit comes from China Mall. So eh. many people have worn that. that yeah. Eh. Yeah. So many people have worn that jumpsuit. Even I have used that jumpsuit mm. to me that, eh, but the style in South Africa is not the one, Ew. you know? Hick, and hick. a person that I feel like her styling has decreased mm. is Gamumpela. Why? We're all about sharing the facts and teaching the tricks. Let's talk all things about music, the life of music. Let's engage about the rhythm. Let's talk about our passion for melodies, sound, and those beautiful classics. Let's get educated about these decibels we all oh so dearly love. On this podcast, we talk about these politics. Welcome to Music Politrix. Sanbonani Dume Lankri Exe Nakalina Kenabusi Baba Kulu Baba Dese Barike the Queen of Pitori and welcome to another episode of Music Politics. This is where we really get to understand all facets of the music industry. Some things we know of, but some things we don't really know of. And this is what this podcast is all about. Thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed. If you haven't, do the right thing. Subscribe, press the like button, comment, share your thoughts. You know, this is an interactive thing today i'm so excited for this conversation one of the most swaggiest people that i know a celebrity stylist of notes i'm talking busiswa i'm talking and i am talking akon so every time akon enters the vicinity of the african continent this is his stylist the savage stylist Udirile. thank you so much for joining oh me my goodness. that was such an amazing <laughs> introduction did i lie though <laughs> no, you didn't lie, but it was so beautiful thank you so much congratulations for thank you because these are the things that you actually do and like it's not like you're thinking i'm making the stuff up you're not but like sometimes you remind me of all the people that i've worked with yeah. and i'm like God, who is next? I need more. What? I need more. <laughs> that is so cool. I mean, you've got Akon on, on WhatsApp, Joe. Like, I mean, I do. Hey, okay, Muti, so how was your day? Um, yeah. video call, if I, I can, but I don't video call him. He's <laughs> sure. a busy man. Sure. But I do text him from time to time. Yeah. And he does really actually answer as busy as he sure. is, which I really appreciate. That's like, very cool. Yeah. So he's the most wonderful people that i've ever met yeah in this industry what what do you guys whatsapp each other about what do you talk about in your whatsapp we talk about work like the last time i spoke to him was about like a month ago Mm -hmm. and we're talking about like some work that he would like me to do so majority of the time we talk about work and it's just so great that even in his busy schedule he does have time to be like hey i want to work with you still and i'm like okay i'm still good he's still (laughs) watching me yeah he actually said the last time i spoke to him is that i see every single interview that you do and i'm so proud of you and and i was like Akon just say proud of me that's so cool yeah <laughs> but also the reality is that you're very good at what you do let's also thank not forget you. that thank right you. but how did you actually get started how do you start work as a stylist and become a celebrity stylist where did it all begin um it began in my corporate profession mm-hmm. so i was in a working for corporate but for a fashion retail company mm. um but i was a pa slash marketing assistant mm. And then they had this thing of sending out um, product mm. um, to a lot of influencers. Sure. But then I would get emails back saying that, um, yeah, thank you for the gift, but this is not really my style mm. and whatsoever. So then I made it a point to talk to my manager and say, can I take over what gets distributed to who? Sure. Because... I'm always on social media. I'm always Googling these people. Mm. And I would know better within the range that they want to take out Mm. in terms of which product should go where instead of it just being generic to everybody Mm. or just taking whatever and then taking it. So like that's when I realized that I really love this fashion thing. And then we, the company started doing, um, um, like a shopping experience for the influencers. And I was like, 
um, can I actually host them? Mm. You know? And then these celebrities or influencers would ask me to be like, hey, can you please tell me? Oh, that's and, cool. and that's how it happened. So it happened by accident. Mm. But then I guess it was always supposed to happen because I've always been a fashion person yeah. even from high school. Yeah. But I just didn't think that I could make a, a like a profession out of mm. it. I never really looked at fashion as a fashion stylist okay. i always knew okay you dress well it's nice but i never really tapped into like fashion jobs mm. because yeah my dad raised me to, he wanted me to become a lawyer he okay. wanted me to become a corporate person okay. so me becoming a fashion stylist was not part of the plan <laughs> yeah, at all. well it worked hey yeah <laughs> it worked so when you say that um celebrities started actually hitting you up to say okay please style me who was that first celebrity to do that and who came there after so the first celebrity that i styled outside of 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 what I was doing at Cotton On, mm. I actually once I saw that I have a niche for it, mm. I because from time to time the company would approach um people that we want the product to go to sure. like influence. So I I decided to approach Boiti at the time. Mm -hmm. So I DM'd her. I can't remember if it was DM or I emailed, mm -hmm. um, but one of the two. And her manager got back to me. And then we gave a product in 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 the store that I was working in, mm -hmm. um, or the brand that I was working in rather. And then I started asking her like, I would really love to style you because she was coming out as a, as a musician at that time. Sure. So then I said to her, Can I please um style you mm. for your 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 musician performance stuff? Mm. And that's where it began. So Boiti was like my first proper client outside of my corporate job. That's so cool. Mm. And under which circumstances do you style? Is it um, all across um, or is it like for specific events, music videos? Or are there niches in terms of what you style for? How does it all work? So I love that question because just last year, mm. I had a very difficult um, situation happen to me. I was styling a certain celebrity mm. um, at a big, a, a very big uh, event, mm. an awards event. Nice. And um, I'm a street style stylist, okay. right? So I like things that are very edgy mm. and so forth. And like a lot of the times uh, as, as a business rather, you want to take any job that comes your way mm. because you don't want to miss an up. I didn't want to miss opportunity of like, oh, this is, this is an award ceremony that is watched by so many people, you know, but what happened in that award ceremony so that I did five items of clothing and some were my style and some was um, a style that the that the client wanted okay. and within the styles that the client wanted I didn't deliver the way I would like to, would have liked to deliver mm. and it didn't showcase properly on stage mm. um and that caused a little bit of a rift between me and 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 my client mm. and it was the way I felt in that moment and the incidents that happened in that moment because yeah. like I was unhappy, he was unhappy, I was unhappy that I'm not, sh I can't showcase the stuff that I believe in. Mm. He wants a specific style, but I haven't produced it well enough where I am happy mm. because it's not my specific style. Right, yeah. So it's a bad representation on me as a stylist. It's a bad mm. rep representation as him as a client. Mm. And that taught me that, okay, I messed up in regards to this project. Mm. But going forward, it taught me that I will no longer take projects that I don't resonate with okay. or I don't believe in the style. So it was, it was, it was suit, very suit tailored stuff. Mm. So anything that is suit tailored, anything that is glam, mm. I've now understood that's not for my forte. Okay. My forte is street style. And that's where I want to, 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 to go into. And I've seen other stylists who have missed up that opportunity. Mm. And I understand just, um, just recently we had the Metro FM Awards. Yeah. And there was a lot of controversy around Buntla Moody Sellers' mm. outfit that was styled by one of like m one of my favorite stylists, yeah. right? And like 
according to me, mm. I didn't like that outfit. Okay. But I didn't like it for the the same the reasons that people who were commenting didn't like it. Mm. I think it was a good outfit. I think it was a great outfit, but mm. wrong platform. Okay. So I didn't think that outfit um um belonged to the red carpet Metro FM Awards. Mm. Um, especially with the theme, um, which is black like to the back. future. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I think it was I understand the idea that they were going for, but I I felt like it would have made better sense in a music video. Okay. You know? Okay. So for me it lacked the 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 the, the glam mm. that the Metro F FM needs. Um, it also lacked the edginess in terms of the outfit. I see. So what I did really love was the accessories. Okay. So I think if 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 the outfit screamed red carpet, mm. it would have saved that outfit. Also, I think the hat was too theatrical. Mm. It wasn't. It wasn't too glam enough. So it's like I see what they were trying to do, mm. but then it just didn't reach. Okay, it, you feel like it, it wasn't executed. Land. Yeah, it sure. didn't land the way it landed. Because but what would you have done better if, let's say, you are um the stylist for Buntle Mudisele at the Metro FM mm. Awards? You know the theme already. What would you have done different? So I would have kept the the the, the, the accessories right, mm. except the middle part of the accessories. But her hand accessories mm. were absolutely amazing. Mm. I think that the problem was that with the theme like Black to the Future, mm. I think they because already the outfit is so theatrical mm. i would have kept it black instead okay. of gold okay right so they could have went with the same type of shapes mm. and but i would have literally kept it black and i think that would have elevated the outfit mm. i think because it's theatrical and now you're moving away from the color mm. it it became too much okay Okay, so through your lens as a stylist, who would you say was really, really dressed very well, executed the theme very well, and just did the things? This is where the Metro FM Awards are concerned. I think um, Lamise Hallworthy knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Like, um, the designer that styled um, Lamise, I love him absolutely. So mm. I don't do glam, okay. and he does glam, mm. and... If I ever wanted to wear glam, like he would be the one of the the designers that I go to. I have a few of my favorites, okay. but he's definitely one of my favorites. Mm. And like he kept within the theme. Yeah. He made sure that every single outfit that Lamise was wearing was black, mm. and there was an interpretation of 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 the future. Yeah. I actually think that what um lamise wore the first outfit that she wore yes. which was black at the bottom and then at the top it was these gems mm. um this bralette with gems mm. um and you could see that bunka was going through with an egyptian theme yes and i i'm not exactly sure what the theme was when it came to lamise first dress mm. but that looked more egyptian on a red carpet I see you. glam level I see you. you understand I see you. so it wasn't too theatrical mm. but we could see that okay this is this is very egyptian literal okay and then when you do red carpet you try and keep the theme but mm. turn it into glam okay and the Met gala let's talk about the yeah. Met gala who really came through for you and who really didn't so i really love tyler oh my yeah. goodness yeah. like and i'm not even trying to be biased it's not because mm. she she's one of us yeah that dress was freaking amazing absolutely um the theme was garden of time mm. um most people went with the garden flowers yes. theme and yes. what so forth and tyler was one of the very few that went with the time theme yeah and like it they just didn't place the um the designer didn't just place the just sad mm. he did in such a way that he created a canvas of a body yeah and was so beautifully yeah. executed and she also had this handbag oh i a, loved it right? ah, 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 of ah. of of time mm. and it was so beautiful but more than anything in history she will she will forever be remembered of how she was carried yes through 
that stage yes. and, and, and just to show you how de- like even that execution yeah. it was like how delicate this this mm. flower is that we have to carry mm. her through mm. another amazing moment for me was seeing the designer cut the dress yes and turn it into an sure. after party outfit and that was done freehand for me i was just like wow but besides <laughs> that what made it so amazing to me it was like the only person that will ever wear that outfit is yes. tyler yes because he cut it yes so she will forever have that stamp that yeah. i rocked a balmain dress yeah right mm-hmm. And I was carried through the way I was carried through yeah, like a queen. Yeah. And like he cut my dress and nobody will ever have this another statement in this dress ever again. Who didn't do it for you? Um, so it's not that she, she didn't do it for me, mm-hmm. but the way she didn't do it, I loved. Okay. Which was Doja Cat. Sure. I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. So Doja Cat like was wearing a, a, a towel. You know, and then she changed into a wet dress. Mm. But the thing about um, Doja is that we know that she's good at PR stunts. Yes. So it's like, it was planned. Yeah. Because she had been wearing so many things before then. Like she had worn like a a wrap mm. of the, the things that we used to wrap food. Yeah. Um, When they were walking in, in, into the street. I don't know where they were walking. Then she was wearing a sheet yeah. while they were buying they were there buying jewelry. Yeah. And then we see her in, in, in the towel. Mm. And then we see her in the wet dress. So you could literally see that she was trying to st- tell a story. Mm. And was a few days between and the Met Gala. So the Met Gala actually started for her before the Met Gala started for everybody for sure. else. For sure. So I can say like it's she was my worst dress, but in the wor- in the best possible way. Okay, cool. Storytelling is also such a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. But look, um, the reason why you're here, Udirile, yeah. is um, there's so many musicians, and before we actually start consuming a lot of people's music, we see them, you know, image. We're talking all things about the power of image, how important image is, especially mm. for musicians, right? But I think, um. We still have a problem where 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 fashion is not at, the, or at least I where I would like fashion to be mm-hmm. in the music industry. When I compare how um South African celebrities wear um when it comes to performances, when it comes to interviews, mm. um when it comes to red carpet events, um. I still have a problem. Mm. But with the red carpet, it's a, it's a little bit, I feel like we're getting better. Okay. Like what I saw on um, the Bridgerton yeah. was a shocker for me. Yeah. Because for the first time in a while, I saw a red carpet event where a lot of people were really dressed really, really well. Mm. A lot of thought was went into it. Mm. And um, yeah, but those were mixed with influences mm. and stuff like that. But in terms of the music industry, I feel like majority of the times when I'm given a, a, a project to do, my fee gets gets reduced. Oh, we do not have budget. Mm. Um, We need to reduce the budget. But then they want to wear exclusive stuff. Yeah. They want to... To, to, to be seen in something that nobody has seen. Mm. But how am I supposed to do it with a low budget? I feel you. How, are you, how do you want an international looking video, fashion wise, mm. everything wise, mm. when everything is always last minute? Mm. Budgets are low. Like, I don't know how many times I've gotten a gig and I only had a few days to prepare. Jeez. You know. And... I feel like even though I've gotten a few days to prepare, I always try to do um, amazing things with, and try to push the envelope when it comes to 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 to, to styling celebrities mm. um, with music videos and interviews and stuff like that. But I feel like when stylists are not pushing celebrities to wear better, mm. they could literally go into an interview and not represent and, and think, oh, okay, it's just an interview. I can just wear a normal suit and mm. it'll be okay. Mm. Or I can just go and perform on stage and wear a, a sports brand sure. and it will be okay. Sure. The sports brand thing kills me. Mm. That one kills me. Because yeah. I'm like, you don't see a lot of 
international artists doing that. Mm. When you look at how Nigerians wear, when you look at how Americans wear, mm. you can see that they take a lot of effort in how they wear on a daily mm. on a daily basis when they're going to do important things. Sure. And I feel like yeah, like celebrities need to step up their games. The music industry need to step up their games. Mm. Like that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to work with people who take their image really seri mm. seriously because it's so it's not a nice thing to see your work like sometimes I'll style the artist mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. and I'll be on a project and I'm not happy with the cast okay of what but then they only have budget for me to only style the star the, the star mm. and like it's such a big problem because it's like okay great the artist looks great, but what makes you think that the entire production should mm. look great? Because it's an ensemble. Yeah. yeah. So small things like that would mm. irritate me. Um, like if there's a person who does that really well, it it, it is Tyler. Mm. And I and I and yes, guaranteed, it could be because the reason why Tyler looks so great is because um she's managed by an American label. Mm. But I feel like even before she crossed over to America, mm. Tyler has always been super intentional yeah. about what she wears, how she looks, mm. you know? It's just that now she's taken it to the next level. Sure. You can see that there is an American brand mm. behind it. But because Tyler took it seriously in the very beginning, it just shows you that it's not impossible. It can be done. Mm. It is possible for mm. us to take our brand seriously. We have resources. Yeah. There are a lot of amazing stylists besides me mm. um, that can do the job. But I just feel like celebrities need to take their brand seriously. If you want to look the best, like it's time for you to invest in the best. Stop lowering stylist rates. Mm. Stop lowering designers rates. Mm. If you want the best, pay for the best and it will show. And more opportunities will come. I think if Tyler didn't look the way that she looked mm. outside of her voice because she has an amazing voice, Indeed. like I think that's why she's gotten the opportunities that she got because mm. she took her brand seriously from A to B. I, I mean, like, A to Z, yeah. sorry. And I like this because it also just, even how you are... That um, Nigeria is like top two and not number two when it comes to just styling, you know, and putting things together. Do you think so too? One hundred percent. So when I got approached by um, Inyanya's manager um, to go and do the the video, which was Makati's video mm. featuring Inyanya and um, and the producer. Um, I forgot his name, Prince Mabenza, I think. Mm, Prince Benza. Prince Benza, sorry yeah. for that. Yeah. So um, at the time, I was just styling um, Makazi and, and Inyanya. Prince was not there. Mm. Um, and I was shocked because I'm like, why do they need me? Okay. Who were you styling initially? Both of them. Okay, cool. Yeah. So when I did that video, like I was shocked. I'm like, why do they need me? You know, Makazi could easily just go to Nigeria they are amazing Nigerian mm. stylists. I've seen them. I follow a lot of Nigerian stylists mm. and Nigerian designers. Mm. And so to be given an opportunity to go and style in Nigeria um, was crazy to me. Yeah. Because like for me, like that's, those are the one of the biggest fashion um, places yeah. to be in. And something that the manager told me was that, yes, um, styling in, in Nigeria is is big yeah. but it's mostly big in terms of the women mm. and not so much in regards to the to to the to the men to the men mm. and he said to me that even even with the stylists or, or the designers that we have in nigeria there's a there's a take that i have when it comes to street style mm. and how i style men that is very different mm. and it opened my eyes to like i did never thought that i could I could compete with Nigerians mm. and it just boosted my confidence mm. when he said that because I'm like, okay, yeah, I am a really great stylist, yeah. you know, like 
And it just puts a stamp to me that when I did style Akon, mm. it wasn't just because of the fact that he was here in South Africa mm. and like he loves my passion and what so forth. Mm. Like I am really good at doing this fashion That's thing true. and I can really do it at an international level. Mm. Like if an entire Akon can recognize my talent mm. and a Nigerian who knows fashion, who's around fashion people all the time, yeah. you know, can recognize my fashion is crazy. The other thing is that you was they 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 there's some Nigerians who have I've had conversations with mm. and they've said to me that but the style in South Africa is not the one. Yeah. You know? Hick, and hick. and like we get scared when we come as artists to come and get mm. styled by South Africans in, in, in South Africa. So do they bring their own stylists? Because I know a lot of Nigerians actually shoot music videos in South Africa. Yeah. So they, they bring their whole crew, including stylists. They do. So when Davido came, mm. um, um, to South Africa to shoot the music video that he did just recently. Mm. Um, he brought his own stylist team. Like, mm. so they do. So that's what I'm saying. Like, for me to tap into the Nigerian market, it's huge. It's huge yeah. because they take their styling very, very, very mm. seriously. Mm. You know, like when when I got approached for Inyanya's video, the director at that time, he was like. We need to come and see your work first. Can you come and meet us? And mm. and I had two days to prepare. And I literally said, Ish, I can't meet you guys because I've got so much work that I need to do. Mm -hmm. But please trust that I know what I'm doing. Mm. Um, And if you need to video call me, video call me. But please trust um, in the work that I'm doing. Mm. And when I finally showed up and I produced the pr what I produced mm. and they were shocked that it was custom made and yeah, so it was like, I, I, be, I learned to believe in myself because in that moment I was like, if I go and meet these people, I won't have time to do the work. I hear. But at the same time, they are scared because th their styling is so intricate. Mm. But because their styling is so intricate and on another level, mm. that's what made me want to stay and focus on the work. Mm. As you opposed know? to actually go out there. Yes. Time is up. Yes. yes. So it, the fact that they liked my work when, when when I when they actually saw it on the day of the mm. music video was great for me. It really boosted my confidence because I don't want to lie. There have been times in this industry mm. where I've been like, "What am I doing?" Mm. Because I'm not being appreciated in this industry because people don't take their images seriously. I hear you. So, what's the point? I hear you. I hear you. Um, how did these people find you? Inyanya, how did Akon find you? Where do they locate you? <laughs> um, literally, I think it's by the grace of God. Like both times, Akon found me through the producing company mm. that the director used when he came here. So mm. the, even the director was not from here. Mm. Um, with Inyanya, it was the same thing. Um, the director, actually, no, it was a little different. The director got a referral okay. from um so the previous year mm. i did a davido music video okay. and i was styling the cost mm. but i was working with the nigerian stylist mm. but she couldn't fly into they couldn't get her stuff sorted in time to come to 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 to, to south africa mm. so i had to work with her and make sure that her vision um gets portrayed sure. and, you know so we worked together over phone call and so i styled the cost in 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 in, in unavailable that, that, that that's, that's so cool yeah <laughs> so when the director came with inyanya the, the um she referred me and she's like oh there's a stylist that i worked with last year on the mm. davido video and she's really amazing mm. so work with her and yeah that's how i met inyanya and his team that's so cool because i mean it's clear then you know what your your work is visual. Yeah. You know, so if they liked what you did, and of course, it's all about execution and delivering, and you can do that too, and you're dope. Oh my goodness, why not? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You know, I struggle with compliments. Yeah. And I've been told that. Um, I think it's because um, until I get where I want to be, mm. I still feel like I'm this small compared to where I need to be. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody said I need to stop doing that. So yeah. I struggle with compliments. It's low-key giving imposter syndrome. Yeah. 
Because even when we were at the intro and I'm introducing you, because that's what you, you have yeah. done. And that was not even a, a lot of the stuff. It's just a little snippet and you're just like, whoa, whoa. Um, it's uh, nice to it? yeah, <laughs> but it's like, I wish I was doing more. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, I wish, like I have so many aspirations and dreams and things that I really want to do in the fashion. And I feel like time is not in is against mm, me mm. you know and i i hear a lot of people would would love to be in the same shoes that i am in. yeah um but yeah in a way I, you can say i'm a perfectionist mm. so i'm um like when i do interviews you mm. hear me like like criticize certain like start how people dress and mm. whatsoever mm. but i've also made mistakes too for sure so i've i've also done projects where i haven't been happy with the final outcome mm. but trust me Okay. I judge myself more than how mm. I criticize other people. Mm. So I am my harshest critic. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But you know, I think it's just being grateful, yeah. you know, and realizing that you you are that dope, mm. you know. And it's okay sometimes to just be like, yeah, but believe the hype. Mm. You are dope, but <laughs> But look, um, as we wrap up, um, who do you think in this country, musicians? Brand wise, image wise, rather, who do you think is just high up there and they are not top two and they are rather number one? In South Africa? In South Africa. Tyler. There's like okay. right now, like she's the celebrity of all celebrities. Okay. And then in terms of styling and image, who do you think could improve their image in South Africa musicians? Okay. So. I say this because here's my thing. I mm. always say I never talk about people who I don't like think they're great. Mm. Right. So if I'm going to sit here and talk about you, it means that I, I see something that is great. Sure. So I would say like the people because she started at such a at such a high level mm. of styling and somewhere along the lines, I think she just went through a period where like it just declined mm. i think she's trying to 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 get back on it i've seen like some nice few pieces now and then okay but like in the beginning i felt like she was consistent mm -hmm. with the way she was dressing and she took her brand really seriously mm -hmm. and i feel like right now she's a little bit more relaxed in terms of how she's portraying herself in the in the in, in the market mm. and i i just really would like her to get back to to that stage so i wouldn't necessarily say that she's the worst mm. but i had already put her on such a high level mm. that right now she's just not bringing it like how i would like mm. her to bring it okay. because she was that girl there was a time when all we could talk about was Gamumbela. yeah and like the way she performs on stage and the way she looks on stage mm. You know, there was a lot of controversy around her look. Like some people would be like, oh, we don't even recognize. But I'm okay with that. Mm. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not faced by controversies and, and, and so forth. Mm. I always say that if you're going to be styled by me, mm. you need to either be on the best dress mm. or the worst dress. Okay. Um, the best dress, obvious. Mm. It's amazing. Yeah. The worst dress is, it's so controversial that you don't know whether you like it or not. Mm. But never, you never be the worst dress because it's absolutely terrible. I hear you. you know I don't think anybody wants to be the worst dressed in anything. <laughs> but that's the thing is like, when I see, when they, when I see my garments, right? Mm. Some of them get um bad reviews. So, sure. you know, but also like, you can't let one or a few comments mm like kill your how you feel about your what you've I feel just produced because you. perhaps you've got a hundred good comments and just maybe two that aren't really feeling it yeah you can't focus on that too come you on can't focus but yeah. what i'm trying to say is that that one or that few that comes in that is negative i also appreciate it mm. i could appreciate it from a standpoint of maybe there was something that technical that i could have done better mm. 
which I now take as a note to improve in 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 in, in my work, mm. or it could have just sparked conversation that it is so freaking good mm. that you can't find anything wrong. Sure. By it. So you'll come up with the most ridiculous thing to say, mm. and for me, it's like. They're talking about the dress, mm. and that's what counts. Whether mm. it's bad, whether it's I negative, I don't want to be in the middle because the middle is boring. Mm. So put me on the best dress, or put me on the worst dress, but talk about. It yeah, I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, um, kind of boring. No bad PR or all bad bad PR can also be good PR yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. So even with the with the comment that I made with Ubuntu Mudisela likes outfit being otherwise at the end of the day they spoke about her. Mm. She was she like you know I don't know how she felt. Mm. You know, so maybe she didn't care. She, mm. Maybe she loved her outfit so much that whatever we say mm. doesn't matter. For sure. You, you get what I'm trying to say. Mm. At the end of the day, people were talking about her outfit. Yeah. You get what I'm yeah. saying. Let's get into music videos. Music video styling um, is quite a niche, I can imagine as well. But very quickly, the best music video styling you've seen in the country and the worst music video styling you've seen in this here country. Again, Tyler, Tyler, okay. Tyler, Tyler. Okay. Best, um, I think the past few videos... Mm. She has killed it and killed it and killed it and killed it. Mm. And what I really love about Tyler is that she really dresses differently from the next person. Yeah. She 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 has her own style mm. that is amazing. Mm. Right? Worst dressed that I can think of recently. And 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 the thing is that I think about recent stuff that happens mm. is that Uncle Waffle's video that Wadibusa. Mm. I do not enjoy the styling of that that video. Okay. I didn't enjoy the production elements of like how unclean it was um, with fingerprints and footprints mm. and that messes up with the styling. Mm. Um, I also think that the one good outfit that I really liked was the fur outfit mm. that she had worn mm. in the music video. And with that outfit... Um, it was the wrong outfit to perform in. I see. And it showed. I see. Like, I hear a lot of people were where they were they were commenting in regards to she can't keep mm -hmm. up in terms of the dancing and so forth, mm -hmm. so forth. But then you also see her performing where she was wearing black and she was wearing ties. Mm -hmm. And because she was more free in the outfit and she had flats in that in that item. And you could see that she was more comfortable mm. with the rhythm of things and mm. so forth. So in in the outfit that was the better outfit, which was mm. the fur outfit mm. that was a bit more dramatic, because she was dancing in heels and it didn't look comfortable, mm. you cannot put a fur jacket, do those complicated moves mm. and make it look flawless. I hear you. So I think the stylist that styled her on within that within that piece mm. really made a big mistake there because it was like such a great outfit mm. but so badly presented mm. in terms of like it almost looks like it's suffocating her okay. and 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 she can't perform to her best ability mm. so it's not just even being in heels mm. it's just like when you look at beyonce when she's about to bust off real moves yeah she's gonna wear something a bit more light yeah. and even if she comes in something very dramatic and heavy she somehow finds a way to take it off before she starts 100 percent. yeah so it's a matter of understanding okay if i'm going to put this outfit on mm. is what i'm going to perform in does it make sense mm. in what i'm wearing okay. and those few intricate details mm. i don't think they were well thought of okay you know and then with the jumpsuit thing, it was like the jumpsuit comes from China Mall. So eh. many people have worn that. that yeah. Eh, eh. Yeah. So many people have worn that jumpsuit. Even I have used that jumpsuit mm. for a, a, a specific production. Mm. But that was like last year, mm. early last year, if I still remember correctly. Mm. So for the jumpsuit that was last year, it comes from China Mall. <laughs> um. And even when I used it, I added mm. elements to it. Mm. So when somebody looks at the jumpsuit, it, it, when the way I styled it, I, I put a bra top and then I added like a skirt to it. So it doesn't look like okay. 
you can easily take it from store and mm. just put it on. I guess there needs to be some elements of exclusivity, I guess. Yeah, yeah. so you, mm. you, 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 I've taken with the budget that I've been given, mm. which is a low budget, mm. I've taken this jumpsuit, put it on dances, mm. but I've put elements into it so that it confuses you. Is it the jumpsuit that everybody mm. has or isn't it? Isn't it? So, like, especially because she was wearing it as well. Mm killed it for me i hear you because it's like okay fine if there was a budget problem and because there's so many dancers mm. and you're going for a silhouette mm. and was the easiest thing to get mm. and it also looked good got it mm. but why is the main artist wearing the same thing that the other dancers are wearing mm. and that can easily be be found you are uncle waffles mm. at the end of the day mm. you are princess of amapiano sure. um you have come out as a fashionista mm. when you post on your socials you always showing us how what what style that you're wearing mm. i now when i see the uncle waffles brand i see her as a fashion girl absolutely so for me to see that jumpsuit and nothing has been done to it you no know, elements have been done to it it doesn't look exclusive it doesn't look customized mm. was a big let down for me whether it was from the stylist point of view or from waffles mm. and the reason why i'm i'm putting waffles as the as as the main person who approved these looks mm. is because she had put her credit as creative director yeah 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 and towards so she end. actually had a creative opinion she had a creative it. opinion yeah. but also for me that also puts a question mark mm. there to say okay waffles we know that you are a big brand mm. i also understand that you're human as well sure you know and i understand that you 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 want to portray yourself as a fashion person mm. um and maybe being a creative director i'm not sure mm. putting her name as the creative director she wanted to have something that says this is how i played a part in my music mm. video but I, unless I'm wrong, right? That was the first time I've seen um, Uncle Waffle say that she creative mm. directed mm. her own thing. There was a part in the in the credits where she said she was also part of the styling mm. with her stylist. Mm. And for me, it's like, is it a her thing or it is, a, is it a team thing? Mm. And are you now going back to your team and getting advice. I hear that. I hear that. Okay. Udirila, we are out of time. Oh, okay. But um, look, the reality of this podcast is that a lot of musicians also watch this. Mm. A lot of upcoming musicians watch this. And I guess a lot of music lovers, you know, just trying to understand all elements of music. But if someone is really just getting on in the music journey, mm. what would you tell them just as a word of advice where image is concerned? So is is this um anybody that is trying to get into a music industry in terms of the BTS side of things or in the forefront uh, no, of things? No, definitely in the forefront of things. Whether they're a DJ, whether they're an actual vocalist, however, but, but someone in who's image, in the front. But in the image Yeah. Yeah. So I would say that forget about the 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 limelights mm. and all the all the stuff that happens like the artificial stuff that happens in the industry. Mm. Like, understand what type of brand that you're trying to create, mm. right? So, if you know that, okay, I want to be a Afrobeat girl, mm. or I want to be an Ama Piano girl, mm. okay, first thing, what type of image do I want to, mm. to have? Mm. And we see the people that are really doing this well is Ira Star and Tyler who are sure. doing well where image is very important, mm. right? I've never seen Tyler being confused by the limelight mm. or being, um, I personally have never seen any bad PR around mm. Tyler. What other elements should they have in terms of, because um, we are out of time, mm -hmm. so I'm just trying to get, so okay. they must be very cognizant of the image they want to actually yes. per, um, sort of portray. Yes. What else? Also, like, understand your your finances mm. i think it's very important and understand where your finances go mm. right so 
you know what type of budget that you're working with mm. and know that, okay, if I want my brand to go to the next level, mm. instead of me spending these finances in places where actually they don't really matter, that actually it's not going to put my brand up to invest it in things that are going to make sure mm. that your brand takes you take your brand to the next level sure. forget about the like i'm saying still going back to artificial mm. G- forget about the fancy stuff mm. and stuff like that if you're going to perform always make sure that you have a budget for perf- perform performing outfits mm. always make sure that you have a budget for um the interview outfits that you can mm. it cannot be that you only have a budget when it's super important i see so yeah. everything should be just as important, whether it's a music video, whether it's an actual gig, whether you're actually just going, even if it's a radio interview, because yeah. these days radio is visual. Yeah. Why do you want to look like the average person mm. if you are trying to be a celebrity? I feel you. You understand? Like you should be so exclusive that when people see what you're wearing, they'll be like, oh my gosh, mm. I want to look like mm. her. And the only person that I feel like is do, doing that really, 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 really well. It's Tyler. It's Tyler. <laughs> How much do you charge? Very quickly. <laughs> what charge up for guy? I will say that it's in the five digits. It's in the five digits. Yeah. So it's. I like, would like it to turn it to six. Mm. Please, people, make my business grow. So like basically, it. ten thousand upwards. Yeah. Okay. All right. I get it. Like, can you squeeze a yeah. little bit? On? <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for coming through. Thank I really you so appreciate much. it. Thank you. Big shout out. Keep shining, babes. Thank you, my love. Yeah. And you also keep shining. Thank you. Thank you so much. The one and only Udirile, the savage stylist, international stylist. When Kalo Hanyane. There's levels to this thing. <laughs> and Nakalina can now see Baba Kuli Baba Dese, but I get the Queen of Pitori, and we are outie.